Hey crew, happy to have you with me. Before we dive into your reading, here's a word from our sponsor, Keen. Are you the kind of individual thirsty for spiritual knowledge? Are you a person that appreciates contact with spiritual people? Then Keen may be the perfect website for you. It is a space which gathers a lot of psychic intuitive individuals that specialize in a variety of different adoric techniques. You can get tarot readings, you can get astrological advice, all in just one place with a very simple to use interface. I myself am struggling at times to find advice from a spiritual mentor, so I often just go for the places that I know are sure and safe and they can offer me exactly the thing that I am seeking. As you know, what you seek is also seeking you. Keen connects you with talented psychics, tarot readers and astrologers. It's easy to get a reading on Keen. All you have to do is create an account and you'll be able to choose from the hundreds of readers who are online right now. These readers each have unique gifts designed to help you navigate life. They can give you guidance on a variety of topics. Are you looking for love advice? Maybe some career guidance? Potentially you would be interested in discovering what lies in your past life. Maybe you're wondering who your twin flame is. Should you change your occupation, ask for a promotion or start your own business? Are you looking to connect with family, friends or pets? Or maybe you just need to connect with divine forces better, with the universe, with spirit guides. You can choose whichever reader best suits your goals and you'll be able to connect with them via phone call or text chat. As a new customer on Keen, you can try your first 5-minute reading for $1. So renew your well-being now. A Keen advisor is online to help you. Go to the link that you see on the screen or click the link in the description, which is the same, to connect with a Keen advisor today. Hey crew, welcome to The Spiritual Social. I'm Lexi, your local light worker. I'm very happy to have you here with me today for another pick a card reading on a romantic topic. This is applicable to those of you who may be in certain connection, situationship, but most likely this is very well fitting for my single people. I'm going to explore the question, who is getting ready to make a move on you? So I have here for you a choice of three different crystals. I purposely chosen a couple of rough ones. It's almost like the person coming towards you is not yet somebody completely settled. We will see what messages abound, but I kind of wanted the energy of a diamond in the rough. The connection may polish as you guys get to know each other, but I feel that for the majority of you that will click on this reading, you will be at the beginning stages of a connection, a situationship, you met somebody and you feel like you're crushing on them. So this is why I have chosen these crystals. They each have specific properties. We will get into them at your specific choice. But first, let me introduce them to you. So for group one, I have here a rough rose quartz. The Crystal of Love. <laughs> For group two, I have a rough celestite, the Crystal of Heaven. And I also have here for group three, the Mother of All Crystals, the OG, the Amethyst, the Crystal of Spirituality. As you can tell, I have already pre-shuffled your tarot and oracle cards. Thank you so much to Mariam for having donated yet another deck to my growing collection. I appreciate you guys so much. I love you. I hope you're taking great care of yourselves and that you're enjoying the holiday period. I want to give a great big shout out to today's sponsor, Keen. Thank you for sponsoring this video as well. If you have had a really good look at these three stones and have made your choice, then I'm not going to keep you waiting. In a second, I'm going to dive in into your messages before I need to let you know that you can follow me on my blog thespiritualsocial.com where I create astrological articles on famous celebrity charts. You can also check me out on the Eden Nearby, my second channel where I post vlogs and meditation videos. On my third channel, The Spiritual Cosmos, I upload astrological material and I plan to spend the majority of 2024 developing that channel because 2024 is going to be a big year in astrology and I'm super excited 
excited about creating really fresh and innovative content. So do me a favor and click right now and subscribe to that channel. You guys will do me a solid if by the end of this year we can actually gather at least a thousand subscribers. That will be a blessing. Thank you so much for helping me with my goals, for being here, for being part of my soul family. I hope that my readings are giving you inspiration. I hope that they're giving you clarity. And with all this being said, then let's jump straight into it. My wonderful patrons and channel members, there will be another reading coming up for you guys by the end of the year. So thank you so much for supporting me. Now, if you have made your choice, let's see what the cards have to say regarding the person who's getting ready to make a move on you. <laughs> Hey group one, welcome to your reading. Let's figure out who is the person that's getting ready to make a move on you. So this is for those of you who are drawn to this rough rose quartz, the stone of love, romantic union, partnership, and sensuality. So I can already feel that your heart is ready for love. <laughs> yeah, you're about to fall in love, just like this crystal was about to fall from my hands. I feel like you're opening up. I feel like you are ready to give and to receive love. And this is an optimal period to attract somebody towards you that is on the same wavelength. Now let's see what the cards have to say. We have here the trunk card and this is a harbinger of stability, loyalty, reliability. Yes, that's what we want to see in a love reading, right? Now we also have here Oh, the threshold, <laughs> hoard, <laughs> the threshold, sorry guys, Mercury is still retrograde. So I see here you're getting ready to take a leap of faith. I feel like this relationship is going to be a game changer, something quite unique to what you usually are accustomed to. Okay, I hope I'm going to pronounce your name correctly. Tlatzol de Otl. And we see here forgive and again we see uh, the pink dahlias around her forehead right the turquoise the stone of wisdom and clarity ah, okay it could be that somebody is returning into your life either from your deep past or recently you may have met a person that you thought things are gonna go someplace but actually they didn't work out and there's been a pause and I think that now you guys are ready to cross the boundary in this connection towards something much, much better. And I think here that um, Tlazo, Tlazo Teotl <laughs> um, is protecting. She's the guardian of the threshold. Usually when we are ready to ascend to the next spiritual level, we get a guardian visiting us. It could appear in your dreams, it could appear in a series of synchronicities. Uh, Rudolf Steiner is the one who came up with this concept. Make sure to read some of his books. I may write an article about his work. He was born as a Pisces son, so very mystical as well. It could be that this person that you're interested in is a Pisces. Um, it could be that they have some of the features that you see here in this beautiful goddess. But definitely the divine is protecting this connection. It is helping it come into being. And it is also grounding it finally. If you have been in the 5D trying arduously to manifest somebody and it was not coming through, I'm here to let you know that here it is. The trunk is established, yeah? The seed of your love has grown into something stable and the trunk is ready to expand and grow some leaves, grow some fruit. It will come in time but the promise is there wow <laughs> what a powerful animal spirit so we have the hawk spirit it's number 32 so this could be significant that could be your age or your person's age let spirit be your guide this is definitely a divinely guided connection the stars had to align for you guys to come through you're dealing here with an individual that could be very proud they may have a prominent chest maybe if this person is a man they could have a very muscled chest if they are a woman they could have a very generous bosom this person walks proudly they are quite fierce nobody wants to mess with them they are capable of standing up for themselves and for other people. You're dealing here with somebody quite brave, but also somebody who um, in the past may have had some predatory instincts. Um, there is an energy of the hunter, uh, somebody that kind of wants to chase, wants to grab, wants to pursue. 
um, and maybe that was the problem. Maybe you wanted to pursue this person and they were like, no, 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 I'm pursuing you. <laughs> there was a, a little bit of a friction moment there, a power interchange. Let's see what the tarot cards have to say. I'm really curious. So we see here the nine of wands. Definitely, you had to stand your ground. There was something of a boundary. Um, one of you had to defend their honor, their values their position, their boundary against the other one's impulsivity. The nine of wands is actually talking about a blaze, right? So the small match that is lit with the ace of wands grows in size. And by the time it reaches the knife position in the minor arcana of the wands group, it actually becomes a blazing forest fire. So we see here somebody that had to defend themselves against the other one. This person may have said something just to provoke you, just to, you know, uh, get you out of your shell, just to see how you would react, to test you. And you were like, no, you cannot treat me like this. I will not bow down. I will not do this. And then there was a period of silence, stealth silence, a pause, some ghosting may have happened. And I feel like this person is like, okay, enough of playing around. I have to come clean. I have to let you know what I'm thinking. So this is quite um, quite a powerful individual. They may have some trust issues. That's why they're testing you. Yes, communication is coming in hot and fast. We have the Ace of Swords. It could be tentative. It may be just a, hey, how are you? You know, I don't think this person is going to write you a letter or a really long email or a long text message explaining themselves. They are just going to try to pierce through the sadness, through the frost. You see how the sword is cutting this blue rose. So it's almost like cutting the sadness, cutting the frost between the two of you, trying to pierce through the iciness of the situation. This person is determined. You see that the hand is very agile and it will come in hot and fast. And I'm saying hot because we have here the nine of wands and fast because you see how quickly the sword is completely piercing the top of this rose. So a situation that has brought you a certain amount of sadness that has made you feel like you had to block yourself from feeling something is going to change in your benefit. This person is coming towards you, determined to talk to you. Now we also have here the Two of Cups. Oh my God. <gasps> For some of you, this will be a declaration of love or if they're not going to put it into words because the Two of Cups is not really a communicative energy. It's more like felt. Like I feel how much I love you and I just want you to look into my eyes to perceive how much I love you. So yeah, it's a very water sign way of communicating feelings. But this is it. This is a connection that stands very firmly as something equal. Something that you did very well to protect yourself against. It's kind of like I feel like this person in the past may have come and kind of tried to hit you up for a booty call and you kind of like... Pfft please back away. I'm not up for that. You know, I respect myself. And then they are like, okay, finally, I see the truth. I want to come towards you. Let's have a go at this. You know, it's like you're getting this person through the way, the brave way in which you stood up for yourself. You're getting this person to change their mind about you and to give you something respectful. Ah! <laughs> Gorgeous. So we have here the Ace of Wands. Um, there will be a lot of um, attraction, physicality, okay, involved in this uh, next encounter with the person on your mind. I see here quite a lot. Actually, the energies are balanced, but I see a lot of fire. So you could be thinking of a fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. With the Hawk and the Ace of Swords, we do have some air energy here, Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. Most likely, I'm picking up that it could be a Leo or an Aquarius that may be involved or a Pisces. For some reason, as I mentioned earlier, the Guardian of the Threshold, there is uh, some Piscean energy. This may also be the energy of Saturn and Pisces facilitating this reconnection between the two of you. This person could um, come from Mexico, Colombia. They could have some sort of Inca or Aztec roots, Mayan heritage. 
yeah there is an energy of a person that comes from a really warm country um a person that's quite passionate has a passionate soul a passionate way of living they could like to eat hot spicy food um and i feel that yeah indeed this person really tried to put a move on you but that initial forceful interaction that kind of took you by surprise and overwhelmed you had to diminish a little bit it had to calm down slightly because from the forest fire from the blaze it went back to being just a little match like here i am offering myself to you not as flamboyantly or as arrogantly as i may have done it at the beginning i'm doing it like in a more modest way in a more classic way because i feel like this person that's coming towards you has realized that you want something stable um, you may have also retreated and backed away shied away you may have ghosted this person or blocked them when they came at you with this uh, really daring invitation to maybe just hook up you know and I feel like something inside of you, either your system of values or your religious moral beliefs, they propelled you to kind of push this person back and say, no, 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 I'm, I'm not just a fun time, okay? And yeah, I feel like this person is coming towards you. This hawk energy is swooping in, okay? Ready to give you what you want, yeah? I don't feel like I want to spoil the reading by adding anything else. I think it was very clear. It was very direct. I love these kind of energies and these kind of readings. Let me know down in the comment what is your situation. I'd love to hear for you, from you. If you want to get in touch with me for a personal reading, keep in mind I offer those. I have a range of affordable options. So make sure to click the second link in the description box to take you to my website. And until next time, take care of your beautiful heart. Ciao. Hey group two, welcome to your reading. So this is for those of you that were drawn to the rough celestite egg. <laughs> Something coming full circle. Celestite is a supremely calming stone. It heals anxiety disorders. It helps you get in touch with the divine if you feel like your connection to something higher than you has been broken, if you feel like you're lacking inspiration, like you're a little bit too grounded, too focused on the material aspects of life, this stone brings with it this energy of helping you get in touch with the angelic realm. I also feel like the person that's getting ready to make a move on you is somebody who's quite shy, who's quite a little bit of an airhead. You know, they may begin a lot of things, but then they forget to finish them. Somebody who's easily distracted, but also somebody who may look very angelic or childlike cherub-like there is a, an inherent glowing beauty about them it's like when you are around them you could think oh my god this person looks so sweet so like innocent and almost like a, a divine cherub you know there is this vibration about them some people have this inner grow you know they look um, even in old age they still have that youthfulness about them um, I'm thinking of Paul McCartney or Selena Gomez, you know, they just have those babyish features, you know, even though um, they are already, you know, adults. Okay, so now let's see the cards. Let's find out more about this individual. Ooh, seeds. So this could be somebody that is an acquaintance, somebody that you don't know so well. I feel that for the majority of you, this is somebody you met in class while you were studying, while you were training towards something. Some of you may have gone out to do a hobby course, some sort of additional training that is just taking your mind off your actual work others of you are studying for a degree and you met this person as part of some of the courses that you share together and others of you i feel like you're doing some sort of additional training pushed by the people that you work for maybe you need to improve your language skills or to improve your computer knowledge and you met this person at a specific in a specific learning environment somehow technology related as well this person may have glasses i'm getting the energy of somebody that could have glasses quite a big nose or an interesting looking nose and um kind of like curly hair curly wavy puffy hair um for some of you out there this may resonate so seeds it talks about a relationship that is just beginning it's incipient you know it's like kind of like you're just exchanging looks and trying to feel each other out from a distance, you know, asking each other questions, asking other people about this person so you get to know them a little bit better. We also have here 
new ideas, hope, and open-mindedness. So you're dealing here with somebody who's very forward-thinking, quite tolerant, eager to debate ideas, somebody who may be well-read and intelligent, an individual that accepts a lot of individuals, um, can speak to a lot of different people no matter what their age is or racial background or culture or status in life, rich or poor. I feel like this individual can be friends with anyone. Now, we also have here the empty room. Ah, this is giving me the feeling of somebody that is quite detached. This could be an air sign, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Somebody who's quite friendly, quite filled with information. You can always go and pick their brains about something and they'll always give you a reference or uh, give you a new word that you may be learning, send you on a right, um, a right point to gather more data. But this person at the same time is kind of hard to know because they can be infuriatingly detached. Um, I think that as soon as you ask them something about their personal circumstances, they change the subject, they crack a joke, or they uh, just tell you, you know, you should be focused on what we're studying or uh, we have better things to talk about. So yeah, you're dealing here with somebody that likes to change the subject, somebody who is not really in touch with their feelings, somebody who could also live a lot for other people. They could be easily distracted by what's shiny and new, by uh, social entertainment, yeah? There is a feeling that this person may sometimes struggle to be by themselves, struggle to feel alone because then they have to confront a feeling of this emptiness inside of them. And that's something that the majority of us need to struggle with. You know, majority of us go through existence having at some point an existential crisis. We have here the vulture spirit. What is it with these birds of prey? <laughs> Group one had a hawk. You are having a vulture. So yes, we are dealing here with somebody that um, I feel has had a string of bad relationships. I feel like this is a person that usually takes the leftovers of other people and personal connections. Let's say they have a best friend. Their best friend is together with a person. That their best friend breaks up from this person and then they get together with that person to try to heal the ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend. So we are dealing here with somebody that is okay with scraps. The vultures usually swoop in to kill whatever is left of the carcass of dead animals after hyenas or coyotes have initially killed the animal. They are cleansing. They are actually, that's the best part about them, the fact that they, they tend to be, you know, getting rid of toxicity. So it could be that some of you are dealing here with a medical student, a healer, um, a homeopath, uh, somebody that works in um, physical medicine, somebody who gives uh, healing, reconstructive sports massages. Um, it is somebody that definitely, I'm getting a very strong sixth house energy. So sixth house is ruled by Virgo. Virgo being the pharmacist, the low-key medic and nurse of the zodiac. That's kind of the vibration I'm picking up here. I'm also picking up on the 11th house energy, Aquarius, the house of groups, the house of connectedness and fraternity and sororities. So I'm seeing here an individual that is letting you know that nothing is wasted. They have quite an abundant mindset. I don't think that this is a person that struggles financially. Um, but at the same time, it would be well for them to just develop a bit more confidence. They are exactly the opposite of group one. Group one is a little bit cocky, but group two seems more modest, more detached, more um, a bit of a wallflower, geeky, nerdy kind of archetype, you know, who just settles for whatever individual pays attention to them and their romantic connections. And usually they're left to clean up the messes, the romantic and emotional messes of other people in their lives. They may have also dated people who had mental health issues. So they're quite sensitive to emotional nuances, but they do it from an analytical point of view. I feel like if you are to be in a connection with this person, um, you're going to find that they take the role of the therapist or of the caring parent. So there will be this power difference between the two of you because this person may, may want to kind of rationally explain your feelings to you rather than feeling them with you as you're feeling love for them. 
So it's kind of like this person is protecting themselves against empathy, against being too sensitive. They want to have the rational upper hand in a connection. And this could be why their connections don't work out. We have here, again, I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly, Maulisa. We have here balance, night and day, dark and light. Oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> so this person could have a really good bone structure. Yeah? They may have a really crazy hairdo. I am getting somebody like with the mad scientist kind of hair or just somebody that has wavy flowing hair um, that is a little bit unkept, Einstein style, you know. Somebody that could be wearing some interesting jewelry as well. Um, but usually somebody that likes to keep it simple, modest, bare face. They don't like to wear a lot of makeup. Um, there could be a split personality that you may notice in them. This person may have been born on a new moon. Um, no, sorry, on a full moon. So they would have their moon placements in their astrological chart sitting in opposition with their sun placement. For example, a moon in Taurus, sun in Scorpio. A moon in Gemini, sun in Sagittarius. And this makes an individual quite contradictory. They could blow hot and cold, but not necessarily because they want to manipulate you, but it's just because they have a very dualistic nature. Yeah. Also, people born on a full moon are known to be individuals that constantly seek connections. They love to be in a relationship. So again, there is a slight hinge of codependency in this person. Uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing. A lot, a lot of the connections out there in the social environment are codependent. And just because a connection is codependent, it doesn't have to be toxic. We need to be aware of these differences, okay? Please, my loves, if you have been listening to all sorts of psychological gurus and coaches out there on YouTube, dishing out 10 minute videos on narcissism, stop listening to that okay it's just creating a lot of judgment divisiveness and separations in society anyway coming back to your reading i just felt the need to say that because it's it's the it's, social media and youtube is chock full of them anyway so we have here the page of pentacles Okay, so a person that's trying to, they feel a little bit um, upset that they don't have access to a lot of finances at the moment, especially if this person is a student, they feel a little, they feel a little bit embarrassed. This is an individual that may like to rush as well. They could have a bit of a raspier voice. They sound as if they permanently have a cold because my voice completely fluctuated in this reading and kind of went a little bit dry and raspier. <clears throat> <clears throat> we have here the Ten of Swords. So you're dealing probably with an individual that has some form of generalized anxiety, a person that constantly is on their feet. They constantly want to do certain things. But this is also an individual that was heartbroken in a personal connection. Um, this person may talk to you before they make a move to see you. Um, they are very mental. There are a lot in their mind. They are very careful as well with so much earth and um, air energy. Yeah, the hanged man. So they are not the most direct individual. When they make a move on you, it's going to come completely off left field. You know, it will take you by surprise. Um, it's kind of like they have to sacrifice something in order to be with you. And I think that this is sacrificing their time. And their time is precious because I most likely feel that this person likes to regenerate uh, by themselves with their own little group of people, friends, relatives. I feel like this person could be very close to one of the parents that spend the most time with them, either the mother or the father. I also feel like with the chariot here, this person is trying to kind of gather more courage, you know. They may have tried to begin working out or they're watching all sorts of like confidence boosting videos to try to get themselves to make a more forceful, direct move to come towards you. <laughs> but exactly. I'm getting a lot of throat chakra blockages with this group. Um, this person may find it very difficult to put their feelings into words. This person is getting ready to make a move on you, but I feel like sometimes they get weak in the knees and they decide, I'm going to do it. No, actually, tomorrow. Let's leave it for tomorrow. Oh, let's see. Maybe the person comes to me. You know, they have this kind of like pendulum energy 
for some reason, my neighbors decided to knock. So yeah, it could be opportunity will be knocking on your door in this connection. And the final card that I have here for you is the star. So don't worry, we'll be together with this person. If you have somebody on your mind and your heart while you are listening to this reading, it's going to happen. The star promises a really bright, beautiful future. You see the shadow of these two people holding hands. Oh, I'm feeling that for some of you. Oh my goodness. This individual could be the reincarnation of a great grandfather. And it's kind of like some of you are playing out some sort of ancestral family issues. Like you take on the role of an, a great grandmother in relation to this person who may be the incarnation of a great grandfather. Whoa, this was completely surprising. But yeah, the shadowiness of these images. This person could come from a country that lives in the north, exactly the opposite of group two, I believe. Um, yeah, maybe they come from a Nordic environment. It could be that their cultural upbringing is kind of making them be a little bit more detached, giving you ample space, allowing you to come towards them because this is how they were brought up. They don't want to impose. They don't want to bother you. So it will be worth actually, you know, initiating conversation with this person and being yourself a little bit more direct and saying, hey, I want to be with you. How's about we try it? I can tell you, you know, I was in a connection with the German. It worked. I got married to him just by doing that. So... <laughs> You know, certain cultures, they, they need that very direct approach, while others may actually shy away, yeah? So we have here major arcanas. This is a fated connection, and you guys are coming together. And I'm just going to leave it here, because I feel like enough is said, okay? I hope to inspire you to manifest this love. Comment down below and let me know what is your love energy at the moment. How are you feeling? Are you excited about manifesting love? Or maybe not so much. Why? Why not? Thank you so much for listening. Please do me a solid and like this video so it gets distributed to other people. I cannot wait to see you on my next one. Take care until next time. Ciao! Hey group 3, welcome to your reading. Let's find out who's getting ready to actually make a move on you. So I had to take a break. It's a completely different day. I had to stop and celebrate Christmas in between group 2's reading and your reading. But I'm happy to have you here with me. And this is for those of you that were drawn to the Amethyst, Rough Amethyst Cluster. Amethyst is a stone that can help you become more intuitive, more spiritual. It is the stone that connects the the higher chakra to the divine. You can receive a lot of important messages. It can calm you down during sleep. I feel like um, it's also a stone that can help you channel more your inner energy. Like if you're struggling to get to know your inner world, if you want to tap into the occult mysteries of life, I feel like working with amethyst is a really wonderful um, way to begin. And I also feel that in this connection, the person who's getting ready to make a move on you could be somebody highly spiritual, um, an ancient soul, an evolved spirit, somebody who could be quite in touch with the divine, with their spirituality, somebody who may be quite religious as well. So let's see, based on that initial interpretation, what do the cards have to say? We have here the mushroom. And the keywords are recycling, breaking down problems. So you're dealing here with a problem solver. Also somebody who you may have initially thought that this person is quite toxic, but in reality, I have a feeling that this person can be quite stable and nourishing in your life. Let's see what the other cards have to say. So yeah, the unseen. You're dealing here, first of all, with somebody that has gorgeous eyes, um, somebody who may have light colored eyes, light blue, light green, light purple. I feel like this is an individual that's quite mysterious, hard to understand, hard to comprehend, hard to predict. You don't know what this person's moves are going to be. Maybe that's why you're here. This is an individual that is keeping an eye on you. I feel like this person also finds you very beautiful, very attractive. Um, but at the same time, this is an individual that could be, it could be hard for you to speak to them, to, you know, communicate clearly with them. You may ask them a question and then they may take a very long time to reply. Or when they reply, they just reply in short answers and you're constantly left wanting more. 
I don't think that this person is doing it to trap you or manipulate you or get something out of you. I just think that they are a little bit more laconic. They are not great poem writers. They aren't wonderful novelists. This is an individual that's a bit more pragmatic, even though they come across as spiritual and mysterious. The way that they think about the world is in a very rational and pragmatic way. Okay, let's see. We also have here Artemis, brave spirit. You may be dealing with a Sagittarius. You could be dealing with a member of the same sex as you. I feel like this is an individual that is financially stable, independent, doesn't rely on the support of their family in order to make a living. I feel that they're doing quite well. They're chasing their goals. They have success. You may be dealing here with a person that works with animals, either has their own farm or is a veterinarian, somebody who could be working in an environment where he needs, he or she needs to take care of the animals. Um, I also feel that this person could be an adventurer, a guide, a travel or a travel, a traveler or somebody who may be working for a travel company. I see here a person that doesn't want to be tied down to a specific space, a person that constantly wants to uh, work towards something. They have a very big goal that they want to achieve, they shoot their arrow and they steadily work towards achieving that specific goal. I see here with the stag in the background, this is a person who may be quite... Um, attached to their habits, not necessarily traditional, but more a habitual kind of individual. If they discovered a country that they really love, they go and visit it regularly. If they discovered a cafe that they really like in the city where they work, they constantly go and work from that specific cafe. If they found a restaurant that makes the food exactly how they want it, it to be made, that's the kind of individual. They go there all of the time. Everybody knows them. So this is a person who's very connected to the things that it's kind of like they, they search for things and once they found them, they stick to them. So it can be a little bit contradictory because initially I feel like you're you got this perception of this person as, oh, they could be toxic, they may be a philander, a Casanova, a person that has some commitment issues, but in reality, it's not necessarily this case. This person just enjoys knowing that they can have their freedom, knowing that nobody is blocking them. I think that this person would suffocate in a relationship with a very jealous or possessive partner that is constantly looking through their phones or asking them, where are you? What are you doing? You know, I feel that this individual wants to trust that you're going to be okay and they're going to be okay even if you guys don't sit each other connected at the hip all the time. This is an individual that also respects your individuality. I think that this is a person that will support you if you are also ambitious and earning your living. This is a person who's going to applaud you, you know, a person who's going to follow you, a person who's going to talk to their group of friends and their families and everybody that they know about your work. And they're very proud of the fact that you are independent and you are an individual. You know what you want. You are working towards specific goals and hobbies. This person would hate to be in a connection with somebody that just copies them or is a little bit like a servant to them, you know. Um, so it's not a traditional individual. It's just somebody that when they find something of quality, when they find something that they love, they stick to it. And I feel that this is the case with you as well. It's like, you know, you should really have a lot of confidence in this connection because if this person sticks to you, that means that they really value you, that you are quite unique. They haven't met anybody like you. You bring something different into their world than other people. I do think that this person is afraid of being bored and of being suffocated in a personal connection. Yeah, We also have here the squirrel spirit and the keywords are believe in yourself. Yeah, this person really likes you when you are on top of your game, when you're confident, when you are self-assured. This is not an individual that goes into um, an emasculated or an effeminated way. For example, if you like, you know how certain individuals, they tend to dump you because you earn more than they do or because you are very passionate about the wor your work and they feel like they want a traditional arrangement where they are the ones whose work is more important than you. I don't know if you guys have experienced that. I certainly have in my own life. Um, I unfortunately had to leave a connection because 
I was just seen as being the one that was a bit too much in the public, too much publishing things, too much traveling for work. And my partner didn't like that. So we had to separate because I definitely feel like I can thrive next to a counterpart that supports my work. And I would do the same for him as well. So I'm just sharing this personal side um, information because I feel like it could be very similar to your case. <laughs> I'm also thinking about Taylor Swift's energy, you know, Recently, I'm writing an article about her and yeah, it's just it's very strongly this kind of energy of having to be in some sort of unconscious competition with your partner or having to dim your light in order to make your partner feel less um, uh, powerless. But in reality, it's just that your partner, if they want to become as ambitious, they need to put in the work the same way that you do. And I feel like this person does. So this person who's getting ready to make a move towards you really admires the fact that you earn your own living, that you have a job that you enjoy, that you're passionate about what you're studying or what you are choosing to develop towards. So uh, they will support you, definitely. This is a very playful, hardworking energy as well. Um, this person maybe maybe in certain cases this person could be um, like not younger but smaller in size than you um, or it could be that they are they may have short feet um, because the squirrel is not really known for being a very tall animal but they're very agile they're very fast um, they're very hardworking they are very perceptive I feel like if you tell them you want something they will figure out a way to find it for you so this is a person that can be very gratifying, that can help you build up your confidence, a person that you truly, I think that you're going to be very flattered if you launch yourself into a full-blown relationship with this individual. It's just a case of negotiating your personal space and having these conversations with your partner regarding how much personal space do you need? Um, would it be okay if we do these kind of activities together? Uh, how often should we call each other or check in with one another you know it would be wonderful if you uh, were able to have this kind of direct and clear communication with them because this is an individual that generally appreciates that they feel that you have your own schedule you have your own life they have their own schedule their own life but when you come together you come together because you want to because you're free individuals wanting each other choosing to be with one another not being forced by circumstances by imaginary biological clocks or by family members or relatives uh, that try to push you to get married be at a certain age to have a child by a certain age you know this is not at all a traditional energy i'm picking up on yes and we have here the queen of cups cancer pisces scorpio energy water sign energy either a man who's very artistic sensitive emotional or a woman who is incredibly nurturing and mothering i also see here an individual that is willing to be honest and authentic with you they may not be so with everyone. I feel like this individual is far too intelligent to constantly be direct and honest. They are careful about how they present themselves in society because they know that certain people don't appreciate the blunt truth. But with you, this person is going to be completely honest. They're not going to wear a mask. You'll be able to see the whole range of their feelings. You'll be able to understand when they are feeling hurt or sad and also when they're feeling horny and when they're feeling really happy and very emotional or very in love with you, very much like wanting to spend a lot of time with you. I also see here with the five <laughs> of wands, this person is somebody who had to, um, like this person, first of all, feels like they are in a competition with themselves and with those around them. Uh, they may have been forged through a lot of arguments and conflicts in their own family and at work. I also feel like this person feels like they have to compete in order to be with you. Uh, there may be another person who's showing interest in you and this person is a little bit riled up by the comp competition. I don't think that this is somebody who backs away and says, oh, wait, wait a minute. If you are thinking about somebody else or if somebody else is trying to court you, well, I'm just going to be the gentleman or the gentlewoman and just walk away and allow you to be with the other person. No, this person is like, what? <laughs> I want to be with you and I don't care if the other person wants to be with you too. I'm going to win. <laughs> 
Yeah, so this is a person who's not afraid of arguing, will not back down in case you guys want to have an argument about something. This is a person who's going to be there and will, um, when the situation requires it, they will activate themselves and will be there with you uh, 100%. They're very brave. They're not scared by a little bit of interrelational conflict. Yeah, the fool. <laughs> and I love this card in the Romantic Tarot because it shows this man dressed in this very fitting pink suit. And you see here, this individual can be very lighthearted. I feel like this person makes you laugh a lot. Um, they can be quite sarcastic as well. They have a very unique sense of humor. They could have a very androgynous way of dressing or they may enjoy wearing pink, uh, bright orange or colors that are not normally associated with a particular brand of gender. I feel that this person likes to kind of bend gender rules. They could be quite avant-gardist in the way that they dress, a little bit rebellious. Uh, they may love to kind of challenge expectations, you know, like, oh, you think I'm a man and I'm not going to rock a pink suit? Or, oh, you think I'm a woman and I'm not going to be incredibly hot in like a very um, masculine tailored suit? So, yeah, there is a vibe of um, an individual that can be quite argumentative when the situation requires it, but can also be quite romantic and they can wear their heart on their sleeve. This person wants a new beginning with you. Um, yeah, okay. And I feel like it's going to be the way that they're going to come towards you, the way that they're trying to make a move on you. It's going to be a little bit flamboyant. Um, they may actually hire a band or uh, it could be that you're going out with them to some place and you think that you have no idea that this is a date, but halfway through the get together, you're going to figure out, wait, hang on a minute, are we on a date? Are you taking me someplace nice? You know, it's kind of like this individual is quite spontaneous. It's quite surprising. I see here Aquarius energy. The fool is usually represented by the energy of Uranus. So a person that could surprise you, sweep you off your feet. We also have here the Knight of Swords. This person could be a little bit um, like, as I said, they could be... I'm trying to put into words the energy that I'm feeling, but it's, it's a little bit... I think that sometimes they get on your nerves. They can be a little bit irritating, but then the irritation turns into horniness, you know, and you just want to kiss this person and tear the clothes off. <laughs> It's a very, um, it's kind of like, oh, infuriating. It's like, I love to hate you, something of that nature, you know, but it's very playful at the same time. It's not like, I love to hate you. I am your arch nemesis and I will destroy you. No, I'm not getting anything dark. I'm not getting anything too intense or too deep. Um, we do have a balance of energies here. Um, this person can often think in a very rational way, but they may not actually have such pragmatic, solid things in their life. I feel like um, they have a lot of friends, a lot of relatives, they have uh, quite interesting goals, but they are not materialistic. This is not an individual that is steadily working towards getting a bigger house, a bigger car. This is a person that relies more on the emotional wealth of having a lot of friends, you know, and I feel that feelings are so important to this individual conversations are important being honest being authentic being passionate being a little bit spontaneous and kooky and i think that these are the qualities that this person brings to your connection as well yeah so this is the person who's preparing to make a move on you i hope that this message helped thank you so much for listening please have a look at the links in the description box below if you would like to get a more extended personal reading with me i am open for those and i would love to help you out but if this is where i leave you until next time take wonderful care of your beautiful heart that was it it's a wrap up once again thank you so much to keen for sponsoring this video please click the first link in the description box below for your chance to get an amazing tarot reading today. See you in my next one. Ciao!